Hi, welcome to Craftex University. I'm Betsy. And I'm Galen. And today we're going to be talking about mixing fabric with Craftex. So choosing fabric to go with Craftex. It is like choosing fabric to go with fabric for the most part. Mm -hmm. You can use the color wheel, the same rules apply with complementary colors and analogous colors. But we did find a few challenges mm -hmm. when we re remember this bag that we did a little yeah, while ago. Yeah, we taught a class on the bag. Yeah, we did a tutorial, and so we went to the fabric store right. to pick out fabric to go with the, we decided to do the, the Marsala. Yeah. And, you know, we realized that this is a little bit more challenging than it looks. Yeah, I mean, we, we pulled out, out. Oh my gosh, we must dozens. have 18 yeah. bolts of fabric to be between the, the outside fabric and the lining and trying to get it all working right. together. And we kind of thought, well, you know, if we're having you know, if it takes us a while, maybe we should kind of talk through some of the challenges and how we approached it and mm -hmm. work through the whole process. Yeah, and we did learn lessons also when we were working on the Sew Craft Text Bags book oh, yeah. about the um, thickness of Craft Text and different tricks for working with that. So, yeah, but let's start with colors. the basic colors. The basic, of let's review the that. colors that we have available. Okay. So there these, you go. these are the ones we came out with first. And, um, these are the basics colors. Yeah. But this is in the vintage. Yeah, line, this so is it's the pre-wash. Pre so it's yeah. natural white, black stone, and chocolate. Correct. I did that and one so then, I can give you the harder that was, version. That was awesome. <clears throat> and then we came out with some colors. Let's move this out of the way. And we've got tangerine, marsala, orchid, blue iris, greenery. Greenery and turquoise. Yeah. And my, now we're coming out with some new colors. I'm going to move this over here. <laughs> so the first batch, I'm so excited about these colors. Our first batch of new colors are available now. Yeah, this, yeah they're this available batch. now. Um, so we have denim, moss, saffron, and linen. Do you want to pick a favorite? Or is that like picking oh, a favorite kid? Yeah. I can't because yeah. no, it's mind. also in combination. I love, well, I love orange, the with tangerine everything. with everything, but the, that's how you mix it up. Yeah. And then are you ready? And, yeah. <laughs> Coming soon, we're going to have crimson, emerald, and sapphire. And these will be available fall. Fall. Oh, August. August, I which think is they're available fall in August. Yeah. It's still kind of hot, but yeah. Anyway. And so, you know how you can get a sampler pack of the basics and you can get a sampler pack of the designer colors? You can yes, get. That's... Oh, yeah. So, you can get this as a sampler pack and it's the essential colors, that's what it's called. Yeah, so all the new colors coming out in 2019. Some of the designer colors, I think these in particular, well, these in particular, yeah. can be really bright. Yeah. And that can be overwhelming with fabric. It's, but you know, some of the other colors too, they're all, they all have their moments, just depends on what you mix them with. Yeah. So, so you so, you have bright examples. Your get your fa I got my fabric out. You gotta get your yeah. fabric out. So I've got my bright fabric, and this one's super bright. It is super bright. So I love this fabric. Yeah. But you know, depending on which craft text you choose, you're gonna get a totally different look. If you do sort of a monochromatic look, you know, I mean, using Monica, that because this term, matches the background loosely. Right. Yeah. Is that why? It kind of blends a little bit more. The red would kind of give you that same look too. It kind of blends in. Or, you know, if I'm feeling sprightly, Very you know, you sprightly. can go with the contrasting. Okay, here's an example. Wait, do this. Yeah, that yeah, would be see something. See how it's like so much of it? it it's, 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 it's dancing, very bright. let's just say. Very bright. But if that's what you want, you go for it. Or you could do something more. Right, that's um, lovely. That's kind of pretty. Let's, get you, let's see how that looks with a big one. Oh, I kind of like that, actually. Huh. I not too bad. Kind of. Yeah, it looks good. Well, the orange, we could do that. The orange, um, I'm not yeah. sure about that one. So you kind of get the idea. Oh, you know what? We could try that and see. What does that one do? Yeah. With a bigger piece, it's not that bad. Yeah. So really, you know, it depends on what you're going for. But when you're going with the bright fabric, you kind of have to just dive in and go for it. But if you do want it to be a little bit subtler, you have, I know you have some examples, but I mean, I, if I really wanted to kind of be subtle, so well, to a speak. little more subtle, as subtle <laughs> as you can be with this bright fabric, yeah. I would go with something like this because it matches Correct. the yeah. background. Yeah. Versus going with the contrasting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But see, you could use this. What if you just had, see, I love that. Just yeah. a little stripe of it. 
and then either other craft text on top That's or um, another fabric. Yeah. So you can just use a little strip of the bright to give it pop. Yeah. I love the, the putting a little pop. That's a good good one. So, so that's here's a good another bright. one. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So this is that new Chula Pink fabric. Oh, I love this. But, you know, it's busy. It's bright. There's a lot of colors going on. Well, that one works with that. That looks great. That looks... Well, but what we found, right, when we were... See, that kind of blends. Yeah. Versus going with the contrast. But okay. what I what we found, I think, when we were trying to match craft text with fabric, and it was a busier fabric. This works, so you have a lot of it, and it's subtle. I think this, like, this works, doesn't work as well with a lot, but it looks really good mm -hmm. with just a little. Yeah. So you kind of have Let's to play around. Turquoise. With the tur oh, yeah, the turquoise. Let's try the turquoise. Yeah. So you could actually... You could do a big piece with this because it's a little bit closer. Mm hmm Yep. Sorry, don't mind me. But this see, is this is what see, we could do for we hours. Do. We just you just go add on a little on. flip in. You add this. Yeah. They're probably going to have to edit this down because we're going to sit I here know. for about 40 minutes You know, and when you shop, this. right, you shop with this stack. Yeah. I do. I carry this with me. <laughs> yeah. I have a slightly smaller one, and that's caused me problems at sometimes because I don't have a big enough piece yeah. to yeah. compare. Yeah, those are 4 by 4 which is a good size. Okay, so we've talked about using the craft text colors to kind of play up or to play down the pattern and the colors in this for braids. Okay. For braids. Oh, your, um, your, zoo, your forest fabric. Force fab oh, the little it's the in little the other tiger, bag. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because you have a bag to show in this that you went subtle. Yeah. So, because this isn't we, necessarily a bright, but it's pretty busy. We were. Um, There's a little. I'd, I was making samples of the brand new colors, and the green. You know, I was thinking, well, how do we play up the green? Right. And found this really fun fabric with these little tigers on it. I think it's and steel um, and so I did green with green which kind of plays it all down a little and a green lining so I went for the monochromatic look to emphasize the green and um, keep the attention on that particular color but we had fun playing with this do yesterday. all kinds of other options if you had this, this fabric orange looks fabulous right and that would be <clears throat> would you do that I don't know if I'd do that. Mm. See, it's not as good as like that was really good. Yeah. The natural looks awesome. I'm going to go this first. Yeah. See, that would look good. Yeah. There's a lot of different options. We should this one. So you can even do the light green. Mm hmm. Or you could do like a little pop of light green. Yeah. See, that would be kind of fun too. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I know. So there's lots of ways to go when you're working with the um, the brights and that sort of the thing. The busy and the bright fabrics. Yep. The other um, issue that we've had is that these are as solids. They're pretty intense. I find like they're really saturated. Maybe because it has the different colors in it. You know, because it's it has like darks and lights in that tone. Mm -hmm. But when we hold it up, and that was with our problem with the tote, when we held it up, it's just so saturated mm -hmm. that it it sometimes overwhelms yeah. what you're putting it with. Yeah. And then you can do the same thing with like little bits and pieces. Yeah. Like I had, I was making a tote, and I brought the actual tote, the finished tote. Get this out of your way, huh? I had these fabrics that I loved that I was going to make a tote bag out of, right? So Love maybe that. one on the bottom, one on the top. And can you, the little square of mm -hmm. moss, right? I love this with it. You know, it's not either one of the colors, but I thought it was mm -hmm. a really great little accent. And so then I used a big piece of it, and here's the failure tote. That's what oh. we've nicknamed it. It's very sad. It's sad to call um, it that. That I put this as the big pocket, and I just think it's too big in order to be successful. It like... It just, it doesn't it's leave enough lively. It's something. So I should have done the tote like this with just a little strip. Maybe mm -hmm. the, an accent, maybe put it on the handles, put a little strip down here or something. That would have yeah. been much better because it kind of overwhelmed it. That said, you can definitely use big pieces of it, and we do all the time. You have yeah. lots of fun examples. Yeah. And one thing we like to do, too, is if you're kind of going to do an understated bigger piece of the craft text to add 
add something else as a little pop of color. Yeah. Um, so yes. this one, yeah, the blue is pretty intense. So that's the sapphire with the linen and the saffron. Yeah. And then, I love the saffron as handles. Yeah. And then I pulled the blue back in as the lining, which kind of pulls it all back together at the end. And then obviously the little bit of blue there. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of balancing it and pulling out the colors oops, from um, the fabric or with your lining. Or in this case, I don't have fabric on the handles, but you can add fabric to the handles to give it a little to pull it all together. Now, something I like here is that the background on this is kind of light and then the color is kind of striking. <clears throat> I mm -hmm. find that in prints like that work better to me with the saturated colors. Like maybe mm -hmm. this doesn't, this isn't striking. There's nothing kind of contrasty, mm -hmm. but this one has a lot of contrast. So it has the deep red, the deep blue, mm -hmm. and it has that linen. So yeah. I, th I got this fabric to go with the sapphire and the, what is this one? Crimson. Crimson. Um, I think it would look great with both of those. And it also oh, looks yeah. good with the linen itself. It's just a little yeah, a little a little more boring. If I were gonna use this, I would use some stripes in there too. Yeah. I'd probably stick with both of these um, with that. But I find I have a lot more success when I go with something kind of striking. Yeah. Something that's got yeah. a little extra in there. Yep. And this is kind of an intense fabric. And so I was playing with it, like with the Marsala, right? Cause it's, it's kind of a dead match. There you go, just do that. You could do these. But, but. I kind of thought that was boring and I loved it with adding yeah. the moss in. Absolutely. And so this is the complementary color, right? So this yeah. is when you use your color wheel to look for different pairings that you might not have thought of. Yeah, it gives you a little inspiration. Mm -hmm. Like, hmm, I got a red. What's the opposite of red? Green. Okay, well this green looks great. This green, no, not, nope, that green's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Where's the other green? Let's just see. Emerald. I'm just curious. No, it needs to be like the that. muted green. Yeah, because this then is so that muted. adds a really nice pop of color that works as a whole. So when you have a fabric that you love and you're having a hard time matching a craft text to it, what's the answer? The answer is always oh, natural. natural. Oh my gosh. We found always go with natural. We were sitting there in your office yeah. and we were like matching the natural match practically everything. everything. Well, it's just, it's, it's like it's adding like leather. Neutral. It's our adding white. I mean, I think, I think natural is the craft text neutral. Yeah. It looks great with this. It looks great I mean, with that. It looks great I, with everything. I mean, every fabric we pulled out pretty much. It looked awesome. Yeah. Conversely, yes. if you're having trouble finding a fabric to go with your craft text, your favorite craft text, denim goes with pretty much all the colors. Yeah. I mean, it is. It was amazing. We were just like going, oh wow, that looks really, that looks amazing with everything. It even yeah. actually looks good with denim if you want to be our denim color if you want to be subtle. Yeah, it looks great, and I love it with the natural. Mm -hmm. So when in so, doubt, try busy fabric. Try natural. Bright craft text or whatever craft text. Yep. Use your denim. I mean, yep. It, it was no fail. It was amazing. I couldn't, I, when we were sitting there mm -hmm. doing it, it's like, that one looks good. That one looks good. But I am, will say, let's say you are tying denim in with a color, which I think that looks, you know, I love the orange. Yeah. So I think that looks fabulous, especially if you, you know, add in that little bit of the moss. But what I always tend to do is I use a fun lining in the bag that ties yeah. into the brighter color because it kind of gives that brighter color a reason. Like I have this for my lining. Yeah. And I love that. I find these two together just plain without something to tie them, to tie that bright color yep. into it. Meh. Or you could add a little on the handle. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, you just want to kind of. Do you see a little pop of that? Think of it like it's a big circle. Like tie it all in together. Yeah. I know, you got the Good thing hand going. moves. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we have the tips of using denim and using craft text natural, mm -hmm. but we forgot we have one more tip. As a picking tip. fabric, you can pick craft text the exact same way by using the color key on the sample, on the this, salvage. This is so handy. I find myself using this yeah. all the time because sometimes you're looking at the fabric and you get distracted by when it's with other colors. Like what, what right. orange is that? And I'm sure, I, in case you don't know, the colors that are used in the fabric will have little dots or in this case little animals as a shape down the side and so you match your craft text to those to pick out which so this matches the orange this matches 
that turquoise color there. Where this is one the, actually has take dots. The fork in. Oh, that has real dots. That has this real has dots. This animals. is what you usually see as the dots. This matches that purple. This mm -hmm. fabric has everything in it. Wait, where's the tur turquoise? Did I do turquoise? Yeah. Here. Oh, and is that that would count as turquoise? It does. It wouldn't be yeah. blue, right? Mm -hmm. And then the yellow. Yeah. The yellow and also the linen. Yeah. Kind of goes with it. It's and really so helpful. You see when you have those dots. Well, this is such a fabulous fabric. Anyway. Oh yeah. This fabric makes me happy. Um, you could do any of these colors with it and it'll look fabulous yeah just a helpful hint i find i use that all the time yeah okay so the other thing to consider when you're choosing your fabric for your bag is the weight of the fabric that you're going to be using with the craft text if it is a lighter weight fabric like a, a quilting cotton i like to interface mine with something that's fairly stiff so that the tech, the weight of the fabric matches the weight of the craft text a little so bit let better. Me ask. So we know the craft text is thick and it has texture. So if you're using, you've done it a lot, right? So if mm -hmm. you're using quilting cotton, let's say on a tote bag, the yep. top of tote bag, like we did in our, um, the one we use as a class sample, yep. you would interface this. Uh, yes, stiff. absolutely. Not Pretty, like a sheer weight. No. Not a shape flex. No, uh, there's a, there's a, um, there's some craft yeah, weight like um, interfacing that works right. nicely. Something with a little bit of body because you want it to be able to stand up to the, te the craft text. So what if you're using this as a lining? So I have done it without interfacing it, but you mm -hmm. like to interface it. I like to interface the lining if I'm using quilting cotton just because I like it to have just that little bit of body, especially if you're putting pockets in it so that the pockets don't get too saggy. Mm -hmm. Will that's... you use a thinner uh, we used to yeah. use the thicker craft weight or like a sheer weight, shape yeah. flex, fell on 906F. Yeah. That's my favorite. <laughs> wow, that's very I good. know, that's my favorite. Um, yes, I use a sheer, a, a, a less heavy on the inside. And really, you know, you, there's not one particular type. It's really just whatever right. you have usually works. Okay. I've used all kinds. Okay, so we, we've both used a lot of denim mm -hmm. in our bags. Do, yeah. you, do you need to interface this at all when you do it, or is it? This one, it depends on the weight of the denim. Mm -hmm. Some of the denims are really nice and oh, hefty. This is a thin weight. And like some this. of them are a little bit thinner. This is nice. Yeah, if they're a little bit thinner, I'll usually at least do maybe one thin, you know, mm -hmm. not super heavy, just enough to give it just a little bit of body. Um, and again, for pockets. Yeah, I put a sheer weight in there. Yeah. And this is an ecot, so it kind of works like a heavy linen, mm -hmm. or a canvas is yeah. probably in between these. You like yeah. drop cloths, too. I do. Like that I've Home used, Depot. I've used that, yeah, yeah. But I usually use that for experimenting, not for okay, a finished Okay, so this bag. you would interface as well. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Most things will get interfaced, even if it's just a little bit. Right. Even the heavier ones, I'll usually add at least a lightweight interface just to give it that little extra bit of body. And something like a denim or like this um, oh. garment weight, home deck wool. weights, mm -hmm. they will definitely add to the bulk of the seam. And we yeah. have enough problem. I mean, this, this does make a pretty bulky seam. By the time you fold this over, that's pretty thick. Yeah. Right? So yeah. You, you have bag examples. Okay. Here you go. Okay. Here's so one. we're going to show a couple of different areas, problem areas when you're sewing. Yeah. A couple of when we, because we did sew craft text bags. And yeah. some of the things we did, this isn't necessarily an example, but that one there. This one here. Is somewhat, if you look here, we kind of avoided this corner with the craft text. We meaning, mm -hmm. not me, we meaning you. <laughs> um, yeah. If craft text goes to the edges and on both sides and you're sewing it into a seam and then you're also sewing it into the bottom, that's a lot of layers of craft text. Mm -hmm. So we might put it on the sides but not the front or the fronts and not the sides or keep it in a strip down the middle as opposed to having it go all the way around mm -hmm. the edges, right? And so places where you see a lot of bulk it would be right here where the um, sapphire craft text is hitting this linen craft text. We can just look at it straight on. The craft text is hitting the linen and it's in a double seam. So you can really mm -hmm. feel that on the inside. Yeah. But you're not yeah. doing it down here at this corner. Correct. So it's fine yeah. to do like this regular corner with craft text. Yeah. And then you've handled the straps differently. You know, craft text, if you're going to be carrying it for a while, can be a little stiff, right? So on this yeah. one, this you case. put I put I, I like to put fabric on them usually just because right. it's a little more comfortable. 
what's interesting here, because we usually, we often use this little strip as an accent, mm -hmm. and then we would make the strap all in whatever the background fabric is, but even that you use denim, so on the back side you use the lining fabric, yeah, which is thinner. That pop. Right, and, and it yeah, just looks so just cute. Wanted that extra little color in there. And since you couldn't have made this into a tube like you would with fabric, yeah. and turned it inside out, you just, let's see if I can get it on here, you just folded it over, butted your edges, and top stitched. And that's that stays correct. great. Yeah. That stays fabulously. A little bit of glue to hold it down while you're, you know, before you get it top stitched, that mm -hmm. helps too. And do you have any other hint tips for using different weights or dealing with the thickness? You know, a lot of it is just patience go slowly. I find that if I iron it and get it warm, mm -hmm. it turn it's uh, more flexible and it's you easier can get to turn. It wet too. You can just get it wet to turn it. Some people do it yeah, some people will will get it wet. I prefer to just get it warm because mm -hmm. I don't usually want to be squirting water all over the place. I use a lot of steam. A steam it works really too. helps me. Yeah. And the And the other thing I do is I bash it sometimes. If I have <laughs> I, bash it. I do. Actually I do bash it. If I have a seam like this, um, and it, it, if it's not laying flat on this seam where you have to kind of mm -hmm. double it over, yeah. I'll take a clapper, you know, one of those wood things, oh, a, yeah. a seam thing, and, oh, I'll, yeah. and I will bash it a little bit to, yeah. to get it or a to massage. behave. I do massage, massage it, too. I'm okay. You know, I do a lot of massaging. You're the nicer mom than I am. <laughs> I'm the mean yeah. mom. No. Yeah, massaging but works. that helps, yeah, mm -hmm. to, get your, to get all those seams to lay flat and... It just takes a little bit of extra care. Yes. Extra care. But the results are worth it. Yeah. And it's also harder with the thickness to turn things inside out. If you're turning things inside out, getting them wet, mm -hmm. steaming them. Yeah. With your, um, when you leave uh, the gap in your outside seam to turn things through, mm -hmm. always backstitch. Yeah. Where that gap is. And try to leave a little bit bigger than you think mm -hmm. you I mean, I, I try to leave the biggest hole I can practically use without, you know, getting into your other seams because mm -hmm. that, that's helpful too to have a big. Oh, and I just oh. realized this when I was making a wallet this weekend. Uh -huh. For me, turning it inside out also, if I were turning this bag, you don't really need to because you could turn it through a hole in the top or in the side. But if for some reason it was a wallet and I needed to do it here, the farther away my hole is mm -hmm. for turning, the farther away from the craft text, the better. If it's okay. right next to the craft text, it was harder for me to get that craft text to turn inside out. Okay. If it was like up here versus down here, it mm -hmm. would work. It works so much better. Oh, good there to know. Go. So I think that's it. Um, we've covered a bunch of stuff about mixing fabric and some some extra little hints that we've learned as we've worked through yeah. making all these bags that we've made, yeah. which is super fun. And we hope it didn't sound scary. It's really fun. No, it's so to fun to choose fabric, especially Please. if you sit there with a friend. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, what about this? What about that? It's what really about this fun. other one? Yeah. And go to the store and pull out bolts of fabric. Yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. We put them back where they went, though. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. We did. Good shopping karma. I think we did. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, if you have any questions. Ask them below, mm -hmm. and we'll get back to you. And no that, official homework this time, mm -hmm. but we would love it if you would show us your favorite fabric and craft text combinations. Yeah, and you can do that um, on Pinterest or Instagram at hashtag craft text university, all lowercase. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> I forward this email. My mom sent me an email that we said hashtag craft text university, all lowercase, but she pointed out that right behind us, it's written in all caps. Thank you, Mom. Um, yeah. It's also, though, see, this was in here. We didn't change it. Hashtag Craft Text University, all lowercase is right down below, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's there. So all lowercase. Hi, Mom. Love you. <laughs> uh, that's it, right? Class dismissed. Class dismissed. See you next time. <laughs>